Hey guys, good day. So in this video, we are going to learn how to add the items or the products into our order list. So this section here, we'll just click this product and then add it to this section. Before we start, let's go to our script the JS file and then rewrite this function so right now um let's just create a variable called script and then this will be a function so inside this functions that we already made we're going to in store that inside that script um so to use that function we can just create a new variable then called new script and then this function initialize which we haven't created we'll create that one later so i'll just going to move all these functions inside the script variable and then i'm going to change or remove this function and use this keyword and then the same with this one use the this and then after that let's refresh our page so here as you can see uh, on our js file let's just add the dynamic variable so it always refresh or loads uh, the new file so as you can see there's an error initialize so let's create that fashion then here the show clock so let's call the show clock function so let's remove that one and then let's refresh so we have another error so see what's the error so here so instead of script let's load script it is load script so let's refresh uh, we have this error so this one we'll just add this and also the same with this one use this fresh Hmm, there's still an error, so here we can create a variable, a global variable that refers to this function. Then use that one, or we can just use the script. Refresh. Well, not the script, but this via or the load script. So let's refresh. As you can see here, the clock is now working so here let's add comment so next is going to register event so let's create the functions uh, called the register event and then here this function uh, involves the click uh, change functions so everything will be handled by this function so let's write the function then here we're going to add a function so once uh, there's a click on our page so if there is use the e target so we'll copy or get the target or the click event so if we test as you can see it returns the element so now I'm going to do is if the user click the add to order so click the product image and 
or maybe this section here uh, the product details so there are uh, that section if user click it that then will trigger something the adding up that product to the order list so so here let's go back to our pos.php file so right now we're just going to hard code uh, the products data so instead of pulling it from our database so we'll do that one later so first is we're going to add a class to our product result container so so the sections here um, we can use add a class inside the image uh, it's used product image uh, also we can grab the product name then the product price so what we're going to do here is we need to check if the element contains or has the class uh, if we refresh if we click as you can see the tokens are the classes are shown so let's see if there's this function exists so I think so as you can see here we can use a function so here it's uh, the classes uh, product image product name and the product price so uh, let's see if we can make use of the class list that contains functions uh, this Stoning folds so so what can you do here is We'll just grab the class list and then here we'll just contains usage on the product name or it contains the product price then here so we'll remove that one so if the click element it or has the following classes then we'll add to order let's refresh so let's try to click so you can see it work we have the add to order so solve this we haven't added but the first one as you can see we have that message so next we need to do is we'll show a dialog then here we can ask for the quantity and then also we can display the product info like maybe the name of the product and the price although it's already written or shown in that page uh, we also need to check if the, the quantity the order is greater than the current stack so if that's the case then we'll throw an error so here it's just hard code so you just imagine that 
these products there are from the database and then we are going to uh, store them in a variable so an object of products so let's try create a variable called products and then here let's create or make this an array of product so instead of an array let's use an object so we can make use of the key um, so So this product has an ID. So we'll show name, the stack, and then the price. So that will be like the format of this variable. So let's just assume we have a product ID 32, and then the name is Toblerone, and then the price is, or the stack is currently it's 13, and the price is 42.52 so the next thing or the future will able will be pulling this from the database so for now this is hard code um, so here we need to get the product ID that was clicked so as you can see here we can make use uh, set the product ID in each of these classes or in mean each of this class or you can just use or use the main container which is that one so let's set this one to 32 um, that one product uh, the class product called containers so here I just grab this code so let's update this one so basically we'll just copy or get the closest product container then here we can lag let's see if we get the element so let's click so as you can see here it returns the element and now we can use or get the um pid so use the da data set and then the pid so if we like the pid refresh as you can see it returns the product id so now since we have the PID we can now grab the product info so here let's create the variable on product info and then this product and so then use the uh, the product ID and then the product info so if we click you can see it returns the product info.